back to my channel. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, the port surgery I'm going to be having this next Tuesday. Um, so today it's Sunday and um, so I'm going to be working tomorrow and talking to them about what is uh, going on for work stuff and uh, figuring out for the next week just in case you know I have a chance to uh, things go bad, you know, whatever. Anyways, um, so I just wanted to uh, give you guys sort of, you know, before the port kind of video and um, also, you know, show you what I plan to bring with me to the hospital. Um, essentially kind of like, you know, my hospital go bag. Um, I got this cute little unicorn pillow, um, but this is not the one I bring to the hospital. This is just the one that sits on my couch because it's so cute. So anyways, let's move that aside. Um, so first essentials. So I have my cute little bag right here, always filled to the brim. So first couple things are pretty obvious kind of stuff. Uh, sleep mask. My mom got me this one for Christmas, a little unicorn sleep mask. It's so cute. Um, I have my bag full of um, my nausea meds, some of my uh, asthma and uh, floating meds along with hand sanitizer and um, I always have a couple flushes in here when I had my line in uh, just in case I needed that so that's in there and I also have two days worth of meds so uh, the day I'll be doing my port surgery I'm, uh, I have to be NPO which means I can't have anything to eat and they won't let me take my meds in the morning so I'm bringing those for later and uh, I have to stay over another day, have those as well. And then um, I have my mask. <laughs> this is my little rainbow mask. It's a Vogue mask. I'll have a link to this in the description. Um, I always bring this to the hospital just in case. I don't particularly like anybody coughing around me. <laughs> um, not for the fact that I'm like immunocompromised or anything, but uh, I just prefer to be on the cautious side and it's never a bad plan because there's a lot of sick people there not to say that I'm not but I'm not the type of like contagious sick so different thing so I always bring this um, and it just makes me feel safer or if um, when I've had to get in my um, pick line or midlines for me I have one on have had one on each arm um, is uh, instead of using their hospital mask, I could use this. That's actually what I use whenever my nurse would change my dressing as well. I just, it's the little comforts in life of dealing with chronic illness. Make it cute, make it fun, makes it a little less sucky sometimes. So anyways, that's in that bag. Um, obviously, wallet is a good thing. Um, I bring my little Kate Spade wallet, wristlet, whatever you want to call it. Um, just because it's simple, it's easy to carry. Um, I can just pick this up and throw it on my wrist if I need to. Um, it has my identification, insurance, credit cards, all of that in here. Then um, get to more of the personal side, I guess, of things. So um, I bring some little slippers. These are just little slippers you can put on your feet. They've got um, I slip on the bottom so they're really good for the hospital. You can just slip these on and have them on underneath a blanket or something. Really good. Um, I also usually wear my Ugg boots to the hospital just because they're the most comfortable and easy to slip on and off. Um, but these are easy to use if you're going to be in bed for a long time or if you get really cold like mine do. <laughs> Yay circulation problems! But So those, I use those for the bed. Um, and then since I'm getting port surgery, uh, I wanted to make sure all the shirts and everything that I'm bringing are port accessible because obviously I'm going to be having a port here and yeah, I want to be able to access that. So I have these really nice button up pajamas. It's a red plaid, kind of Christmassy, but I don't really care. They're super soft and I love them. So I have this and it's a button down shirt. So I can wear this with a sports bra and be perfectly fine. So there's that. 
and there's the bottom of those. Um, so the next is a really comfy sweatshirt. This one is very stretchy, so it still allows for port to be accessed underneath it. It's very short, but it's, uh, it's, it says, my dog thinks I'm kind of a big deal. Uh, which I just, I found this at Target and it was so cute and it's super soft, not too heavy, um, real light, so it doesn't keep you too warm. It's really great for sort of just keeping you just enough warm. Um, so there's always good to have a jacket or sweater or something. I usually bring a hoodie just cause the fluorescent lights in the hospital really bother my eyes a lot because um, it's just so much light and I typically get migraines from that. So I um, probably also am gonna grab um, either, I don't really like hats so much, so I usually just bring a hoodie. So I'll probably grab a hoodie and um, as well as this sweatshirt, but uh, that's there. And then a change of clothes because Always good to have an extra pair of clothes. So some yoga pants, um, <laughs> underwear, you don't need to see that. Um, and then I have this new shirt I got from the Mighty Well. It says undefeated and it's really cute. Um, it's a nice soft cotton. Um, so anyways, that's another shirt. Um, this one is port accessible mostly. Um, still stretchy enough to do it. It's not uh, a v-neck would be obviously a little easier so I might bring a v-neck as well as this one or a tank of some sort but I just wanted to I might wear this the day of the port surgery just as the shirt I'm wearing into surgery um, and then change but I really love a shirt it just reminds me how much you know we go through and even with all of that you know we're still living every day still doing things and we're undefeated so a lot of the people don't see it as a chronic illness shirt when I'm walking out. They're like, oh, what team are you with? And I'm like, no, no, that's not it. But anyways, continuing on. Um, total must for me, again, goes with the sort of migraine problems, uh, sound issues. Hospitals are very loud. There's a lot of beeping noises. There's a lot of people talking. There's a lot of screaming. Um, just so much noise and I cannot deal with it. I really have a lot of sensory issues with noise and lights and sound and all kinds of other wonderful things. Um, so I have a pair of noise canceling headphones along with a pair of ear pods, um, depending on what I need. Sometimes uh, having over the head headphones, they don't always work for me. Um, sometimes it's just too much pressure. So sometimes I just like, to have my ear pods and um, these are also <laughs> a little more discreet um, but these are really good if you need to cancel out noise or if I just need to um, if I have a migraine and I just want to get rid of all the noise I'll just put these on with the noise canceling and it literally just it's awesome um, and then along with the tech related things I have my, have my MacBook this is my work laptop. Um, no, probably gonna do any work, but it also has a lot of my editing stuff on it until I get my own MacBook, which here hopefully soon I will. Um, but right now all my editing stuff for my channel is on here as well. Um, and I just always like to have a computer just in case I need to do anything necessarily. But most of the time I do most of my stuff on my iPad and then obviously my iPhone. And then the next part of all of that is I just got this really cute um, case for chargers and stuff. So this has been totally awesome. So I can put, um, I actually have started, I have a six port USB slot um, charger. So I just use that and then I carry all the USB charging cables. And then anything that doesn't connect to USB, I just bring that cable itself and then um, put it all in here, step it up, and all my charging cables are nicely secured and in one place. Um, so along with that, uh, a couple more toiletries, glasses, because I wear contacts, um, my contacts case, contact solution, all of that. 
um, and then toothbrush, toothpaste, toothbrush, toothpaste. <laughs> um, this is one of those quick toothbrushes. I really like this one. Uh, really cute rose gold design. Um, love this toothbrush so far. And then uh, toothpaste, obviously, um, and probably some of the little placards just to get stuff out of your teeth if you need to. Those are easy to use. Even just if you're not even going to brush your teeth, you can just use those to sort of make your mouth feel a little cleaner. Um, and then obviously I have, <sighs> this is my infusion pillow. So this has a long story behind it, is um, when I was first getting, I had to go to an infusion center and I wanted something really nice to rest my arm on because a lot of the times, you know, I've got an IV right here in the crook of my arm and you can't bend your arm when you're getting it. So even though you're sitting in a chair or something, it was just all really, really uncomfortable. So I got this pillow to see how it fits my arm so perfectly. So this has been my infusion pillow and hilariously enough, it was a rainbow unicorn and I've loved it ever since. And so it's been through a lot of stuff with me. So I like to take it with me to anywhere that I need a nice little pillow. You can use it as a pillow. You can use it for your arm. You can use it for your leg. You can use it wherever you want it essentially. I mean, sometimes I even just like sit with it like this and it's just my huggy pillow. It makes me feel better. Um, along with that, I have this really nice blanket. I just got this. Um, it's the, what is it? Unhide, what is it? I got this out of the FabFitFun winter box. I loved that box. Yeah, Unhide um, blanket. So this thing is the most cuddly, lovable blanket you will ever find. And I have just been snuggling up to this since I got it. So it's a really nice, like, medium warmth blanket. Just to, I feel like it's, I like the hospital, like the blankets that they give you that are warm, but they're so thin. You need like four of them to keep warm. And they always fold them really awkwardly. And so I just, I'm going to bring my own blanket. Yeah, I don't like the idea of bringing my own stuff to the hospital because you can get germs, but I always bring it home, throw it in the wash first thing, and you know, that's how it goes. Um, same thing with my infusion pillow, they're all washable because um, I would wash it every time I took it to the infusion center. I always brought a blanket there too because I'm really cold natured <laughs> and when you're getting infusions, it makes you even colder. So it's like so freezing along with like, you know, my booties and stuff. So I'd always be like wearing like sweatpants, a sweatshirt, my blanket, a pillow, um, my Uggs, and people would look at me like, cause it was like the middle of summer when I started. And I was going like that into a, you know, the infusion center and people just look at me so weirdly. And then they, you know, all the infusion patients know it, but it's like, you know, when you're walking in there in the middle of summer wearing that kind of stuff, people are like, what? going on with her she's a little weird not that I'm not but more than usual <laughs> so anyways I've got my blanket um and that is very much I love having soft fuzzy things around me uh it just gives you that extra little bit of like comfort and warmth and just home feeling instead of sterile hospital environment which I want it to be sterile but you know it's gotta have some happiness and all this. So I have my, my little happy things and all of that. Um, and then obviously, last thing is my water bottle. So it's, uh, looks like one of those thermoses everybody has, but it's not, I got this at Target. Um, I had one of the other ones, the pink ones, I forget what the brand is called. I'll put it in here somewhere, but I had one of those I dropped it like two days after I bought it. It got a big dent in it. Um, it scraped off a bunch of paint and that was just made it look kind of like bad, but it still worked fine. But then I don't know, like I washed it like every other day, every day. And I put it through the dishwasher like 10 times 
and I still cannot get rid of the black mold in it. And I have like scrubbed that thing so much and it just won't go like away. So I bought this one from Target and it has been my trusty thermos now. So um, I use my water, uh, two packets of liquid IV, and that's my hydration drink with electrolytes and all that uh, for my pots. And so that is my trusty water ball. Um, I'll obviously bring a bunch more liquid IV packets too. Um, I'm using the passion fruit ones right now and I bought those from Costco. Uh, it's like a 30 pack for like 20 something dollars. So it's the best deal I think you can get on them because if you buy them on Amazon, they're like 20 packs or 16 packs or something. You can buy them in stores and they're about the same, but it's you get the best deal buying like the 30 pack because it's the cheapest. Anyways, that's very important there. Um, I also, and I don't have this packed right now because I'm gonna pack it the day of, is snacks. I usually bring, obviously, some salty snacks, um, a couple of like little nibbits of different snacks that I want. Um, Cause when you're in hospital, you really can't go and get the like food you want. So I like having my happy snacks with me and just things that I can, you know, eat and drink. Um, and obviously the NPO, so I won't be able to eat. So when I get done with this, I'll probably be pretty hungry. Well, maybe, depending if I'm not completely dizzy and nauseous like the last time I got out of Twilight Sedation. But uh, we're gonna hope it's not like that this time. Hope for the best, plan for the worst. Um, but I really wanna make sure I have some stuff with me because if, I mean, obviously if I'm really hungry, I'll get nauseous too, so. That won't be fun either, but um, so that's what I've got packed in my bag, um, and that will be coming with me along with um, oh I forgot to put in there as well. But um, I'm also grabbing my own um, bandage or the the clear like the Tegaderm, except it's not Tegaderm because I'm allergic to Tegaderm. Um, it's IV 3000 and um, I told them, you know, that I, I'm gonna bring that um, so they can place that over the port when they put it, um, when they access it, uh, because obviously I cannot use Tegaderm because it makes me just like break out in a rash and boils and all kinds of fun. Um, Cause I mean, I've had so many reactions recently. That's one of the reasons I've had to switch out these lines is I just have had some really bad like reactions on my skin to those along with just the regular IVs like I had an IV here for like three days and I got a literal boil from the plastic being on my skin for like a day or two and my nurse came by and asked what had happened and I told her that was from like it just the little plastic piece sitting there on my arm and it like created a boil and the tape ripped up part of my skin um which is why I only use paper tape I do not use the other type so I'll probably bring some paper tape as well because sometimes they have paper tape at the hospital sometimes they don't sometimes they try to put that really 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 painful tape on you and I have to like tell them not to because it will just rip my skin off with it. Which is very painful and not fun because I really don't need my arms looking any worse than they are right now. But um, yeah, so I know this is gonna be super irritated from whatever they're doing. Um, my doctor already told them to do EDS protocol for stitches, which is internal and external stitches to make sure that it actually heals correctly. And then usually it's twice the uh, healing time for stitches as well, um, due to the fact that we are slow healers and the um, stitches have a tendency to not actually bind our skin back together as well as normal people. So that will be, so she's already written all of that up in there. They've got all that information. I made sure to talk to them ahead of time and say, hey guys, I have, you know, adhesive allergies. 
Um, I have a lot of problems. I've had problems with anesthesia, problems, you know, pain meds don't work very well on me, so I'm definitely worried about the after the surgery to uh, make sure they can control the pain so they've already, you know, they've, they're, they're planning on like two hours after the surgery to make sure that they can control the pain, um, which I'm sure will be entertaining. Um, one other thing I'm bringing is probably my heating pad. Um, I'm not sure I will need it, but it's better to have it and not need it. Um, that's just for if one, if my stomach is being really annoying, um, it's always great to have heat on that. Two, I don't think they're going to want me to put heat right on that. Usually they say to put to put ice, but um, I don't know, just heat for my back or anywhere else that's hurting, uh, it's always good to just have a heating pad. It also keeps you warm. <laughs> So another way to keep me warm while in the hospital. Um, I may sound like I'm overkilling this, but I just am one of those people who really likes to be more prepared rather than not prepared. So I would rather have like a whole ton of stuff with me and not need it than bring like nothing and be completely miserable. So I just... There's a lot of things that bother me um, in certain places, and so I just have to prepare for them ahead of time. Like, there were times, there, I go to a, a week-long class for training for work or something, I have to make sure I pack either a hoodie or a hat, um, because the fluorescent lights kill me that much. I just, I cannot do fluorescent lights, they just, they hurt my eyes so much, and it's just, it's painful and it creates migraines and I really just don't need that on top of everything else right now. And so I just plan ahead and, you know, I know at this point a lot of my triggers are different things and so I just know to pack certain things with me and that's fine. Those are, that's my life, you know, I know, I know what I need, I know what makes me comfortable. And I know how to deal with a lot of things now, which is great because years ago I really didn't know how to and I was always suffering through a lot of things. But um, anyways, wish me luck on that port surgery. Um, hopefully the next time you talk to me, I will have my port and hopefully it'll be accessed and I'll be able to do my fluids like I have was doing before my... Uh, blind decided to break on me. Um, I'll put, post another video about why I actually need the port surgery, what happened, what led up to this, all of that kind of stuff. I'll put that on a whole other video because that's, there's a lot to that. Um, that could be quite long if I tried to put it in here right now because this is probably already pretty long. And so I just, I'll put that in another video, but uh, yeah, hopefully it all goes good and you know, sun will shine on a new day and I'll have a port, life will get better and I get back to being my awesome self again. Not that I'm not awesome, but just the awesome-er with less dehydration <laughs> so I can actually do more stuff. I feel better.